Welcome to the Beyond Ordinary Woman podcast. Every two weeks, we'll post a podcast version of one of our free training videos, but you can access them now at beyondordinarywomen.org. This episode or series includes downloadable information on our website, beyondordinarywomen.org. Go to resources on the main menu and click on podcast slash video extras. Enjoy the podcast. Hello and welcome to Beyond Ordinary Women Ministries. Today, I'll be your host. I'm Sharifa Stevens, and I have the pleasure of having a discussion with the founder of Beyond Ordinary Women, Kay Daigle. Kay, thank you for being with us today. Well, you're welcome, Sharifa. Thank you for being there and talking with me about this. I'm excited because this is part of the series that has already been in progress. It's called Reimagining Discipleship. And if you haven't listened to, watched previous episodes of this series, I invite you to do so. Here are some of the topics. So Nika Spalding spoke from a theological perspective, Debbie Swindoll from a spiritual formation perspective, Susan Binion, spoke to us from a missions perspective, and Elizabeth Woodson spoke to us from a church leadership perspective. Now, all these women are leaders in their fields, and they have a lot of insight and humility and compassion to share in each of these podcasts and videos. So I invite you to to take a look, take a listen. Today, we are going to be discussing reimagining discipleship from a kingdom perspective. And so, Kay, I wanted to ask you, what do you mean about the kingdom perspective and how does this apply to reimagining discipleship? That's a good question. Actually, this theme has sort of run through all of these all of these videos and podcasts in a way, in various ways. Uh, Not everybody used the word kingdom necessarily, but it's really been there. And Elizabeth Woodson, actually, her first point about how we can uh, reimagine discipleship is to focus on having a kingdom mindset, Mm. looking at things through the kingdom. And I, so I'm sort of going to take off from, from her talking about that to talking about praying in a kingdom way and, and also a little bit more, I guess, about the mindset as well. Elizabeth's had a really good definition of, of a disciple. A disciple is one who follows Jesus, is being changed by Jesus, and is committed to Jesus's mission. Mm. And if that's the case, the kingdom looms very large in Jesus's mind. He is, he came to establish the kingdom. He established the kingdom in the, through the church at this point. And someday there will be a kingdom on earth as well. But at this point, he brought the kingdom to bear to the people. He, he showed them what the kingdom was going to be like. It's going to be a wonderful place. And so as his people, it needs to be important to us. We need to be seeking the kingdom. You know, in the Lord's prayer, which is really a model prayer, Jesus says, pray in this way. We're to pray in the way that he prayed. And in the Lord's prayer, he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so if that's a model prayer for us, we need to be praying that the kingdom will come and God's will is done. And God's kingdom, yes, I don't think it's just an eschatology of the kingdom that for that kingdom to come. I think it is the kingdom coming in people's hearts, the people coming in our world as we as the church show people what God's kingdom is to be, mm-hmm. the love, the acceptance, the forgiveness that we can have in the kingdom, the relationship with our our heavenly father that we can have. All of those are kingdom mindset goals. Those are things that we should be looking for and working toward. And as we look at the scriptures, you know, the main, the main core of discipleship to me, it's, it's mentioned in several places, but in Mark 12, 
this is the story. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked him of all the commandments, which is the most important. The most important one answer Jesus is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Mm-hmm. By doing and following this, these com- two commandments, these twin commandments of loving God with all of our being and loving others as ourselves, we bring the kingdom to those around us, our influence, we influence others through this. And so loving God, putting him first in all things is a kingdom mindset and loving other people enough to show them our love and God's love in tangible ways is, is bringing the kingdom into the lives of other people. Sharing Christ with them is bringing the kingdom into the lives of other people. So as it really, as I thought about those two things, I just felt like maybe we needed to talk just a little bit about a way that I have found to just remind myself that God's kingdom is first. And, and that is through kingdom prayers. Mm. Kingdom prayers are just a way to pray for the kingdom and not just for our own selfish and there is not always selfish, but just our, our own needs do this for me. God do this for me, do this for me. But so it's kind of like a, it's a perspective shift. It is that shifts us out of ourselves and into the bigger story of the kingdom of God. Absolutely. It is to look at what, what we need in our lives as what do we need for the kingdom? What is God? What, what do we need to be doing as people? How can what's happening to me affect the kingdom? Mm-hmm. How, or how does the kingdom affect what I think I need to hear or what I need to be praying for? Years ago, really, this, this started with me years and years ago because someone that was close to me shared a prayer request with a group of people that I was part of. And she was very concerned because her husband's business, he was in business for himself and that depended on clients paying him. She said, he, he is, his business is not doing well. Would you pray that his business picks up? And, and I thought about it and I knew her husband very, very well. And he is not a Christian. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like God nudged me and said, what if I need his business to do poorly to draw him to me? And I thought, maybe that prayer request is not the right thing to pray. Mm. Now, it's not necessarily wrong to say that his business grow, but I think there's a bigger kingdom perspective here. The larger prayer for him is God bring him to yourself that he might know you and love you, open his eyes, give him faith and whatever that takes, you know, if, if, if it means that his business needs to lag for a while, then we hand that to you and put it in your, put it in your hands. Cause we can't see that and we can't know, but mainly my prayer is for these things to happen to him. And so it started me on a little bit of a journey of thinking through prayers more carefully. How was I praying for people? How was I praying for circumstances? And I'm not saying that you don't continue to pray that someone be healed or someone get a job. It's not, but there is something bigger here that we need to think about. Looking at it from God's kingdom perspective, maybe somebody doesn't need the best job. Maybe somebody doesn't need the job that's going to take them away from their family. I mean, we just have to pray that God will move in ways that will draw the person involved to the kingdom or draw me to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And so I've, I've just worked on that a lot through the years. And when I had opportunity, I 
actually made up a list of taking prayers from the scripture, taking scriptures and making them into prayers. Mm. These are scriptures that would suggest a kingdom perspective in a situation. Is this something that is available to people who are listening and watching right now? Absolutely. I'm going to put this resource online. It'll be free to download. Great. BeyondOrdinaryWomen.org. But I have found it very helpful. I think other people have too. And, you know, in our in our particular culture right now, and, and we're talking about what we're imagining discipleship today. And I think this is one of our big problems today is that we're so self-centered that our prayers are self-centered. Yes. Or our prayers are superficial because we're only praying for the circumstances and we're not praying for the person's heart, the person's walk, the person's perseverance in the faith, what it, whatever the person might need in certain situations. We're not, we, we run into somebody that we're, we're having a, a problem with a hard person, somebody that's hard to deal with at work, somebody, a neighbor that we're struggling with. It could be somebody at church. Um, mm-hmm. And, and we just pray God change them, get them, you know, or get me out of their life or right. um, take me, take me away from this, this relationship. I don't want to be in this relationship anymore. Instead of praying that maybe we need to change. Mm-hmm. I think God's trying to teach me something in the midst of dealing with that person. Mm-hmm. What, it, what do I find in the scriptures that are telling me what I need to be like in the midst of that? And so those are some examples of some of the prayers that I've taken scriptures, but it doesn't have to be my list. I mean, the right. truth is we, we, when we read scripture, almost anything can be a kingdom prayer. If it's taking us to a deeper level of praying for other people, that God's kingdom would come in their heart or God's kingdom would come on earth, God's kingdom would come in our country, God's kingdom would come in our church mm-hmm. in ways that it is, it is not happening. Those are kingdom prayers. It, takes, it, it, it changes our perspective, but it also changes us. Yes. We, it takes us away from our individualistic type of thinking that we have in the United States, I think we need to be praying that God's kingdom comes specifically in the hearts and lives of people that we know and, and in our church in deeper ways that we would be all seeking the kingdom of God. I think that would do away with a lot of the division that we have in our church right now. If we're all seeking the kingdom of God to come in us as we deal with other people, you know, Nika talked about, she talked about a re, her reimagining discipleship video and podcast. She talked about that. She thought there were three things we had to do was we need to, as we, as we're discipled, we need to know who God is. We need to know who we are and how we relate to other people. Mm. And those are all things that we are part of this, you know, how, how does your kingdom come in me as a person as who I am, your spirit lives within me. We, I know who I am. I'm your child. Your spirit lives within me, but who do you want me to be? How do, how do I move in this world? And how do I, how do I bring your kingdom to places that there's darkness and who is God? We need to know that if we're going to be praying to him and asking for his kingdom to come. And we need to be loving him and other people, you know, the orthodoxy and the orthopraxy, which several people have mentioned in, in these videos, several of the women, that, that it's got to be a two-sided discipleship is two-sided. We've, we've got to think right and we've got to, we've got to treat other people the right way. Too. Yes. Yes. I mean, you bring up so many good salient points. It seems to me from listening to you that kingdom prayer differs and with an emphasis on discipleship, it, it, it gets, you know, you are not kingdom praying when your emphasis is comfort or status quo, you, you know, that you are not doing kingdom prayer then, but kingdom prayer has 
an aspect of vulnerability to God, to be open to where God wants us to be, what he wants us to do, uh, despite the circumstance and maybe as part of the circumstance changing. Kingdom prayer is communal in a way. It is, it is not just I, it's a, it's a we concept where we are praying for an entire realm to be, to be made manifest in our actions as we are led by the spirit, as we follow Jesus, as we are obedient to the father. And really the, the purpose of discipleship is growth and maturity uh, so that we are more in, in the image of, of Jesus as we pray towards that end, the spirit empowers us to be more like Christ and to follow more faithfully. It's the means and it's the vehicle at the same time. Am I hearing you correctly? Absolutely. I agree with everything that you just said. You, you put it very, very well. I think that kingdom prayers can lead us to live more sacrificially too, if, mm -hmm. because they're, they have to be paired with the scripture, I think, yeah. really, um, because that's how we get our kingdom perspective. That's how we, that's how we know how to love this God that, because we know who he is and that's, just how we know how to treat other people Yes, uh, because of what the scripture tells us. And so I think if we're praying those things for ourselves and for other people, we are praying that we would lay down our rights at times for other people, that we would be willing to give up so that we can have reconciliation with people. Mm. Um, I think that it affects us, not just in our prayers, but in our walk with the Lord, with our willingness to sacrifice as Jesus. He, I don't think you can pray kingdom prayers without understanding that love requires sacrifice. Mm. And you should be living it out. We will live it out also, not just pray it, but we will begin to live it out. And you can't really pray for the kingdom to come. You can't really pray for people to get a glimpse of God and his glory if we're not treating them that way. Yes. So I think it affects your character. It affects your, your heart in the end. And it, grows us and as you said to be more like Jesus which is what we're supposed to be as disciples we're supposed to look like Jesus we follow Jesus we look like Jesus we let him change us into his image and the fact that we're incorporating the scripture in our prayers more as we think about praying for other people and for ourselves is it's just going to change us that's really good Kay. Before we wrap up, I wanted to give you an opportunity to share with us. You, you mentioned Mark 12, 28 through 31, and you mentioned the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6, 9 through 10. Are there any other scriptures that come to mind as we're talking that you would encourage our listeners to pray in, in the way of kingdom prayer? Well, I think, I think the whole idea of kingdom prayers is based on the true the two scriptures that you said, and also Matthew 6, 33, which says, sink for his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Now, the context of that is in the Sermon on the Mount, and it is about people and their physical needs. And he says, these things will be added to you if you seek first the kingdom. But it's a principle. We seek first the kingdom. And then God takes care of the other things, you know, those, those other things that we're so worried about, our, our safety and our ease and our comfort, all of those things can become idols. And he will take care of those things if we just seek first his kingdom. That should be our priority. It's, it's you know, he takes care of us when we seek his kingdom first. And then also Jesus's prayer and 
the Garden of Gethsemane when he was about to be crucified. And he said, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And that's Matthew 26, 39. And that's the attitude that you have to have in a, as you pray kingdom prayers. Mm-hmm. You're praying for qualities in your life instead of things. You're praying yeah. for God to take over instead of him to just fix things around you necessarily. And they may not be things that we necessarily want, but we pray like Jesus, mm-hmm. your will, not mine. But there are specific, a lot of specific verses in the, the resource, the document that people can download. I have examples of prayers for spiritual growth, hardships and suffering, when prayers aren't being answered, just different, different issues. But honestly, there are so many more circumstances than the ones that these are just examples for people right. so that they know how to write, how, to, how do I take a verse and pray it? These are just examples for them to see. That's great. I think, well, I'm, I'm thankful for this discussion. Prayer is so vital to the life of a disciple uh, to get the, the power and also the perspective of the kingdom of God. It's essential to pray. It's essential to be in contact with the Lord. So this is an essential part of reimagining discipleship. And I thank you. It for- is. Let me, let me add one thing. Cause sure, I was sure. thinking about it a lot as I was thinking over this. Yes. One thing that we have, I think, minimized in our churches at this point is confession. Okay. Let's talk about it. Yeah. And, and I mean, I'm as bad as everybody else. And I'm not saying I have all this down in any way, any of this, but we have, I, I don't remember the last time that I sat in church and we had a prayer of confession or a time of silent confession mm-hmm. or anything like that. Now I have gone to churches that have liturgies that that is always in there the, yeah. in the liturgy. They make sure that is in there. And I appreciate that so much when I hear it. it that's one reason I like to go visit those churches is because we pray and confess our sins before God. And I, I think that's important, but if we're going to grow as disciples, confession has to be part of that. And the reason I thought of this with kingdom prayers is another type of prayer that is a kingdom prayer. Really? Mm -hmm. It's a prayer that, that the things of earth, the things of the world that I am taking into my life with all the time that we, we hear stuff out there instead of stuff in the word and stuff from our church and all that time, you know, I've got to cleanse that out. I've got to let God cleanse that out of me. And if we're really focusing on the scripture to point us how to pray, that is one of those prayers that has to be in there because God's kingdom can't come in us. If we are holding on to sins yeah. Idols, things like that. Yes. Sins, idols, shame. Absolutely. That's that's a really important word. I think that's a that's a great and convicting place to end. And if you would like more information, if you would like examples of kingdom prayers, again, you can download a kingdom prayer resource on beyondordinarywomen.org. If you would like to look at other videos and podcasts from the Reimagining Discipleship series, please feel free to go to the website and get those too. Kay, thank you so much for your time and for telling us more about the kingdom perspective. Thank you, Sharifa. Thanks for listening to the Beyond Ordinary Women podcast. You can find more podcast episodes and resources for women in leadership by going to beyondordinarywomen.org. This podcast is produced by Beyond Ordinary Women Ministry. Our production team includes Evelyn Babcock, 
Kay Daigle, Deborah Herring, and Sharifa Stevens. Theme music, Back in Stride by Don Miller, used courtesy of Christine Miller.